This is One on One. Normally this is one on one from the Tish WNET studios at Lincoln Center, but sometimes you have to bring two powerhouses, two of the most important people when it comes to public relations and the brand of your reputation. We have right here John Dorley and Fraser Seitel are the co-authors of Rethinking Reputation, how PR trumps marketing and advertising and the new media world. Good to see you, gentlemen. Good to see you. Uh, by reputation and... Uh, introduction, John Dorley is the founding academic director of the Master's of Science degree in Public Relations and Communications Department at New York University. And uh, Fraser Seitel, your background is fascinating. You're an adjunct professor there in the Department of Public Relations and a consultant and author. You guys have been doing work in this field for a long time, haven't you? Well, he's, mu he's much older than I am. I, I, do not, I cannot tell that. Yes, yeah, let's uh, make up. And full disclosure, I always have to do that. I have a relationship with John over at NYU where I've been teaching and describe the program where I'm teaching, but more importantly, the work that you're doing as the head of that program. Sure. Well, as you know, Steve, I was with Merck, head of corporate communication until 2000. We knew each other there, worked on some healthcare initiatives. And then I taught for a few years at Rutgers. An opportunity came to build this master's program at NYU. And uh, everybody, including the PR people at NYU, said it would never work. Who needs a master's degree in public relations? And we started it. There were four or five master's programs in the country. Now there are 72. We're the world's largest, but our students were getting great jobs. And I'm not sure it's a testimony to my wisdom or not, but this guy on my left is the first person I tried to recruit, and I did. I hadn't seen him in years, 2005, first faculty member I recruited. Couldn't reach him, so I sent him $100 worth of flowers <laughs> to his house. True story. He had to romance the guy. Yeah. True story. Flowers. And he calls me and he says, Dorley, you're, this is the first time I've ever been courted in my life, and it had to be by you. <laughs> so he did join our faculty, and now and we that have was the rest of And that was the end of my reputation. No. no. <laughs> and by the way, let's get right to it, guys, because what you say is that reputation management is a different phenomena in the age of social media and the Internet. That market, traditional marketing and advertising overrated Talk about it. It really is true. I mean, today with uh, so much communication, 24-7, 500 cable channels, mm. uh, everybody and his brother-in-law uh, transmitting on the Internet, you have to have character. You've got to stand for something. Uh, what we say in the book is that what it takes first is performance. That's the key to public relations. Performance first, and then you communicate. PR, in our view, is performance recognition the recognition of performance. In other words, you got to change the action. If, mm -hmm. if you did have sex with that woman, you can't tell us you didn't. If you did, I did don't. not have sex with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. Exactly. That doesn't work because in the end, you can't spin it, right? Because that's, you have, a, by the way, get the book. You don't have to be an academic. You don't have to be in business. You have to be someone who wants to manage your reputation. Because you say, stop the spin. Yeah, we say it's a dirty word. One of our chapters is called the sin of spin. Right. Uh, we think it's maybe the, uh, are there seven cardinal sins? Or uh, We think it's the next cardinal sin, maybe the seventh or the eighth, whichever right. one it is. It's a terrible thing to do. You know, it's misleading, it's duplicitous. There's a, there's a bottle with a label on it, it says, tastes good, good for you, and then you turn it around a little bit, and it says it could cause cancer. Mm -hmm. You know, and you spin it so people don't read that. It's the wrong thing to do. So that's what we teach our students at, at NYU. We have a required course in ethics. And getting back to what Fraser said in your, your question, Steve, it's a new era in communication. Paid media, are the expenditures and the resources there are falling. Public relations, earned media, third-party testimony on the ascension. But, and those are the stories we try to tell. And by the way, in the book, there are a whole range of cases. You, the, um, let's talk about the, um, the, the BP case. Mm -hmm. What were the lessons of the BP case for everyone else who may not be in the oil industry? Well, it's very interesting because the BP case, BP actually did the right thing. The, the bottom line of public relations is you take action. You, you, you fix the performance. Something bad the right, happens, right? Fraser? Something bad happens, and what they did is you fix it up. You clean it up. And what BP did, uh, uh, unusually, was BP volunteered to pay for all of the liability, and we'll sort it out later. They were terrific, but... What the, what the mistake was that they made is the CEO at the time, a guy named Tony Hayward, yeah. 
didn't stick to the script. I want to get back to my life. They want to get back to my life. It's not much of a spill. It's uh, it's something that we can handle. The U.S. is litigious, so they're yes. going to bring in lawyers. Plus, it's a big to... body of water. And so <laughs> what happens is, so the bottom line is, because of him going off reservation, not sticking to the script, not listening to somebody like you or somebody right. like uh, Professor Dorley, BP's reputation was tarnished. Talk about that, because in the stick to the script chapter, it talks about being disciplined, John. That is important for all the folks out there who say, come on, I'll say what's on my mind. Shoot from the hip, the danger there. Yeah, and I think discipline requires thinking about what your reputation is, whether you're an individual or an organization. And, and the reputation, as we say in the book, and in a peer-reviewed book that we have, a textbook, we say reputation is the sum of performance, behavior, communication, based on your identity, what you stand for. When you stray from the latter, that's the worst. You're, it's an inevitable downward uh, trend, and, and you can't get out of it. But and, and, you and just can't. It's not just communication. As Frazier says, you can't action. put perfume on a skunk. It's performance it's, behavior. Right. Stay on that. Stay on that. Right. There are so many people who hear the word public relations, right. and they think, oh, and I don't want to use the word spin again, but if they say it the right way, I'll often tell folks um, in the work that I do when I'm coaching people, and I don't coach people in government because we interview people in government, but I'm, when I'm coaching someone, I'll say, look, what are you going to do to fix the problem? Stop telling me what you're going to say about what are you going to do. Don't you, tell, don't you press people about what they're going to do with their actions, no, right? Ab yeah, no, absolutely. And of course, it's a matter of listening to people like this as opposed to lawyer. A lawyer will tell you what you must do to defend yourself in a court of law. Public relations tells you what you should do in terms of doing the right thing. In other words, mm. if you're counseling the Catholic Church, you say, oh. don't shed, don't, don't shield right. these pedophiles. If you're counseling Penn State, you say, let's disclose. If you're counseling Lance Armstrong, you Go say, ahead. look, if you're doping, people are gonna find it. In, in the 21st century, in 24 seven communications, the internet, YouTube and Facebook and, and, uh, and uh, Twitter and all the rest They're of it. They're gonna find out? people are going to find you out. John, is that the assumption that we should start with, that, look, sooner or later, they're going to find out? Therefore? Yes, sir, I think disclose. But just as importantly, it's an error where the good news can be spread faster, too. Sure. So, for example, in one chapter there, the power of planning, we talk, about, talk about the Pickens plan. Yeah, T. the Pickens Boone, plan. Pickens, T. Boone's Pickens. A uh, multi-billionaire. In the 50s and 60s, he was, according to Fortune or Forbes, on the cover, the most hated man in America. Now he's a beloved person. He's dedicated to energy independence. We were able, through one of our students at NYU, to spend time with him. And we really believe in the guy. He's, he's dedicated to energy independence and anything that's American he wants. And he's pointed out, for example, in the book, that if we could just convert our 8 million heavy-duty trucks, fleet cars, to natural gas, liquefied natural gas, we would cut oil imports in half. And he sees this energy independence that we have as the biggest threat to America But he's ever. telling that story. He's he not depending upon anyone else to share that message. But through him, he's also depending upon, for example, President George W. Bush on the right, President Obama on the left, Carl Pope, the yes. former head of the Sierra Club, said T. Boone Pickens is out to save America. So he's become a hero, and he has 1.7 million people online who took a declaration saying, we're going to work with you, a positive act for energy independence, just like Alcoholics Anonymous or Weight Watchers, a declaration that says we're going to do this. And that's the power of communication you, today. You do not have to own your own corporation. You do not have to be an entrepreneur, even though there's not that there's anything wrong with that. Um, you have to be someone who cares about your reputation, want to manage your reputation. The book is called Rethinking Reputation, how PR, public relations, trumps Marketing and advertising in the new media world. The authors are Fraser Saitel. Why is his name first? Um, and John Dorley. John, and by the way, one more plug He's for the end. better dresser. Yeah, we could see. And the, uh, uh, the, and the program again at NYU is? New York University. And we're proud and honored that you're going to 
teach crisis communication for us. I was, not doing, program. I was not doing that to get that plug, but I'll take it. <laughs> We're <laughs> proud and honored. Gentlemen, thank to, thanks thank for coming you. into our studio. Thank you, sir. Uh, normally one-on-one, -on -one, but sometimes when you have great people, it's one-on-one, one-on-two. Steve Adubato from the Tisch, WNET Studios. We'll be right back right after this. Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence. This special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Tisch WNET Studios at Lincoln Center. Funding has been provided by Hackensack University Medical Center, Berkeley College, TD Bank, Qualcare Inc., a local managed care company covering 750,000 New Jersey residents. The law firm of Gibbons PC, Verizon Communications, and by the Russell Berry Foundation. Promotional support provided by the Star Ledger and NJ.com, everything Jersey, and by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association and its monthly magazine, New Jersey Business. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One on One with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System.